Mm-hmm. Hello, everyone. This is Big Alski. And this is JTB. And this is Chapter 13 of Ball Bade's Master Ninja Karma Run. And it's been long overdue, but, you know, he's finally finishing this up for us. I can well comprehend taking a break from this, uh, <laughs> especially at this point in the game. This um, this point in the game is really where it starts to get rough. I mean, definitely for me. So these last few chapters, like, I mean, for the most part, like a lot of the strategy stuff has been explained, but it's the, um, you know, like it's the final run up until those last fights. It's just, oh, it's the most annoying stuff right at the end of the game. And it really is hard to keep it going. Can you get 50 UTs here? Yeah, you can. Um, I mean, you really do have to be careful once you're up top. Like, ideally, you want to try and stay to the left and right of the platform up top to try and kill, like, two or three at once. Um, but again, like, it, it, a lot of this is kind of luck, really. The This fight, like, if you... only takes, like, a handful of UTs to kill four or five at once. And then, like, you either have the option of swapping to the Warhammer and trying to kill one at a time, but they love to just, you know, hit you out of your UTs and screw you over like that. It's Yeah, he did a couple of... Uh things that that i always do hit the wall when you're not thinking you're going to and you know get hit and there you go the, the shark can cancel sure is a big uh, big deal or throwing the shark and stun i guess is what it's called yeah the shurikens are really good in this they really do help to create distance between the enemies and stunning them for that extra bit of time that was a close call right there yeah but i think this is yeah that's his 50th ut oh okay wow yeah. perfect timing there I mean, this, I, I hate this. This is one of my most hated fiend challenges to Karma on. It's just, for the most part, they're quite fun, but this one's just, you have you have very, very little time. So, you know, like your time is very, very important to do this stuff quickly. So, another Kiori trick here. Oh, God. Curse that guy for even finding this out. Because, like, this is so, like, the, the thing that I think people like remember it like need to remember about this is like it's cool when you see this stuff on video but like you're not seeing the probably 50 attempts where they just go through your fucking fire wheels and <laughs> it's so annoying like this is one of the main reasons like i think this chapter as well it's just such a grind like these fights there's almost nothing you can do to like make sure that those fire wheels will actually connect on the enemies like positioning does help and like I found rotating the camera like a certain way can help, but like sometimes they can just ignore See, your smoke. It didn't points. hit him right there. Yeah. It's it's so annoying. I, I hate these fights so much for karma. It's just it's this is the worst one right here coming up. You got um I think nineteen seconds to get four UTs. It is possible, of course, but you know, if this doesn't happen, like any one thing going out of sync here and you're not gonna get your four UTs, it, it takes it right down to the wire. So he swims back all the way through to come to this point, right? He goes through the through the uh, the altar area and swims all the way through to come back down this way? Yeah, he does. The reason for that is to uh, get the most fight out of the ogres. Um, and you'll see that when he does the ogre fight. And then picking up the armlet of benediction there will actually freeze the clock for a split second. So that's why he leaves that there. Because it does buy you a little bit of extra time in that encounter. Um, oh, wow. Now, I think he just gets, yeah, he gets the ET here. You can get three ET, three UTs and an ET out of this fight. You just have to uh, either juggle the last enemy or, like, only hit the final one once. And then you can get the Debilero UT as well. This fight is also just complete bullshit. <laughs> I hate this fight. Dude, looking at this stuff again, just, oh, it's so Brings annoying. back some bad memories. Thanks, Brings, Balbade. Yeah, thanks, Balbade, for making yeah. me up this stuff. Um, you can actually get eight UTs out of this fight. Um... That involves a hell of a lot of luck. You need to have the uh, firewheel trick work twice and only kill, um, like basically never have your Debilero UT kill more than two, except for the fourth and fifth enemy. And then you can roll away, charge a UT. He, he almost gets it here if that hadn't, hadn't have hit that one as well. Um, and then obviously you can get two UTs out of the final one. There's the windmill shuriken trick. It's cool that that's uh, been shown. I think but, Kel's um, the one that found that out. And I think that's the that only was time me. he used it, I think, in this video. <laughs> that was me on Ninja Dog. Many, oh, really? Yeah, there many years go. ago. Um, I like this. I like how he does this fight. This is really creative. He uses the um, the rat here, because it just it just lessens the amount of time you have to use that damn firewheel trick. <laughs> and <laughs> it is actually a little bit faster. Like If you do the firewheel trick, that runs that time right down to the end. So that's a really clever use of the uh, rat there to get the like quicker UT. 
So does the timer, the timer only starts when he looks at him, right? Yeah, for this encounter it does, yeah. And I think he, uh, I think he gets three UTs here. I uh, know you can't actually get three, uh, three UTs in ET, I'm not sure. Just yeah, he got a little bad luck there. Yeah, but, There's uh, some extra points for the next guy. Yeah, I would not want to be the next guy um, <laughs> that goes after this score. But uh, yeah, here's why he goes back, because um, if you go back through the uh, city area, and go back where the save point is, the great the uh, drawbridge will actually be down and you have to lower it from the other side. And I think that costs you around 18 seconds. Um, yeah, so, the timer starts before you even get to the lever. Yeah, it starts way before. So he'll obviously lower the drawbridge in the room underneath where he fights the commando fiends and then come up here to farm the ogres and take advantage of this sweet spot. Sweet! <laughs> it's, uh, God, this fight is also just total garbage. I hate ogres so much. It, like, Ogres are like probably the, the worst offender for being really, really random with their health. I know uh, that sweet spot there, like if, if you can't see it from um, where he is in the video, it's actually the point where the drawbridge ends, like there's like a uh, like a level there, and like as soon as you step over that, that's when the Ogres will start coming after you. So you can roll you know, over it, make them start coming towards you, then roll back into it to get the sweet spot to work. And this I is always one. hated this fight. Oh, I mean, it's this been a long is, time since I've done it, but... This guy is such a piece of shit. This, this is why I think, like, when you get to this part of the game, it's just... Like, you have Chapter 13, like, which I think is probably one of the worst. Like, you have the worst fights in the game by far. And then you have Chapter 14, which is just nothing but Ghostfish and Doku. And then you have Chapter 15, which has got some of the worst gauntness in it in the entire game for a karma run. And it's right at the end of the run. It's... I hate that, but the level 1 Luna um, really helps in this one, I think. Um, I didn't actually take note of how many UTs he gets. Um, Health-wise, if you were able to get just single-hit UTs all the time, you probably could get a full 15 out of him with the incendiaries, but of course that means, you know, he has to not get out of your incendiaries 15 times in a row, which is probably not going to happen. Uh, pretty sure it was Kyori that showed the fire wheels and windmill shuriken trick for the ETs, which is a really good trick to use on the uh, Flail Ryu. Well, I liked how he uh, he went to go cancel out, switch, and then go and cancel back in to, you know, it like cancels or stops the Nimpo, and then he can start again. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good trick, guys. This Did anybody show that right before, now. or is this something? Um, I'm not sure who was the first to show it. Um, I know that's something I've mentioned before, but to, as to the first person to do it, I have no idea. Now, this is one of those things, if you get a UT, it would totally kill your essence. Does he show it again? Yeah, 35,000. That was just on the ET. If yeah, you got a UT huge... essence, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have got credit for any of it, right? Yeah. he break, Well, he breaks the limit for it. Um, I think the limit for a single essence, I did work this out. I was working on an essence guide. Um, the single, the, the most amount a single orb can hold is like 65,000 and change. Uh -huh. And if you get, if you kill something that's going to take it over that, uh, like the Kitetsu Ryu, he's worth 10,000. He almost got weebled there. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I, wonder who, I wonder how many people watching will get that. We'll get that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you only get like the change after 65,000 for the uh, UTs. So, but I mean, essence at this point in the game is kind of a kind of a non-issue. Uh, it's, it's interesting that he does the uh, farming method for Awaken Downward. I know like you can do kind of a mixture of both when you like try and like kill the enemies as well as taking their health down. Both of which. You need a lot of luck because obviously, unless you're snare, like you're not going to knock down Elmer every time. Yeah, so, yeah, he does that every time. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, amazing. It's bullshit. That guy's blatantly cheating. This. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's going to hear this. <laughs> He'll probably admit to it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I cheat. Finally, after all these years, yeah, we get to I've throw. never seen anyone with the consistency that he has. But then again, as with everything, you're probably not seeing the hundred runs where it doesn't work, but. Right. Um, but yeah, for Awakened Dalma, like it's it's fairly straightforward. You have a ton of time for this boss fight. So I mean you can either do the, you know, like quick kill method with UTs or just try and farm the enemies. Um farming the enemies is probably definitely more reliable if you want to go for like, you know, the less amount of time for spending on this encounter. Um, but again there that's pretty unlucky that, that killed both of them. Ideally if he'd have killed one, you know, he would have been able to get an extra UT and then follow it up again. <laughs> That Gleaming Blade UT is so powerful. Right. 
And it's interesting to note as well, make sure you keep your uh, Inazuma at, like no higher than level 2. Uh, level 2 Inazuma is really, really good for knocking down Awakened Dalma and Nishe, which will come into effect in Chapter 15. Uh, whereas level 3, I don't That's know... That's bad luck right there. Yeah, that always sucks when they do that. And um, level 3 that won't actually like knock them down. That attack does so much damage. And how it just grinds on you. Yeah. What you can't see there as well, it's a pretty neat trick. Um, in the space between where she actually like lifts you up to slam you back There's down onto the ground. Too, sorry. <laughs> Twice in one fight, that really sucks. <laughs> um, but you can actually pause the game and use health. And that's what he does there, so he doesn't actually take one of his talismans away. Which is really good awareness. That's pretty hard to time, too. Nice, he got the little double ET there, it yeah. looked like. Or it sounded like to where it went through twice. Yeah, that definitely double connects on on, on our. I was hoping he's gonna finish it off with a gleaming blade. That would have been cool. Online and gleaming blade ET, but yeah. Now I think uh, I think he gets just over two hundred thousand there, um, and for Alma that is a good score. But I mean, you can definitely get more points out of her that way, um, like with you know the a perfect speed kill kind of hybrid. But again, it's you know wrapping everything up at this stage. I'd imagine is his biggest concern, and I can certainly understand that. Uh, th this fight is also total garbage. Well, you know, this is where how we talked about knowing where you are and using the direction, you know, to, to not hit the walls. And, uh, you know, that that's where that comes in handy. Yeah. It's also or if you are going to hit, know you are going to hit, you know, but like there, he, he rolled and then went to like a little 45 degree angle, you know, you know, put that input in the control just has that control. That's something I could never do. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of practice. Um, the uh, movement guide I put up actually got quite a lot of good... Uh, like People seem to like that quite a bit, even though the game is really, really old. But um, that definitely explains that stuff more in depth. And like This fight is a really good showcase for how important that is, because not only do you have to really know when you're going to hit a wall and when you're not going to hit a wall, you really have to be able to position your Devilera UTs so you're not hitting the zombie too much. Because even though he has an insane amount of health, if you're like hitting him as well as the pillbugs with every single UT, then you're not going to be able to farm him at the end like this for you know constant UTs. So it's definitely important to know when you're going to be able to hit him and when you're not going to be able to hit him. Right. And then, of course, getting uh, two spawns. You know, if, if you just kind of do it, I think, what, the regular way or the normal way, uh, sometimes you don't get, or you don't get the second spawn. And it's you have to manipulate the, the tablets or something. Because when I first played the game, and what's this right here? Is this happening to you? Yeah, that's just the box trick. He's freezing the timer. Oh, really? Yeah. Because it's showing it like three or four times right there. Yeah, he's doing it over and over again. It's just to stop the time limit. Oh, cool. So that is a really good trick. Yeah, like, um, for, I don't, yeah, he doesn't show it. Um, I know you made a video showcasing this, but in case people don't know, you have to make sure that you put the, um, like, the flame tablet in before the leaf one, and then you'll get this to respawn. If you just swap the tablets around in this room, then you won't actually get these fights. Like, you can see there, the flame tablet's still there. So make sure you put the leaf one in and put the flame tablet in the empty slot, and then you'll actually get two timed fights out of this. And of course, there's a ton of points in this fight, so you definitely right. want to make sure you get both. Oh, you know, I went back and looked at my hard video, and I did miss, there's a fight that I missed in there. In uh, going back to chapter 10. So, I kind of hate that now. Makes <laughs> me want to do the whole thing over again. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, no. Uh, no. We're, we're both too old to calm her, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it does to you. Oh, you need to stop it now. <laughs> My karma running days are long gone, trust me. But uh, yeah, th this is the uh, final fight for Chapter 13, actually. So um, it's a fairly short chapter once it's all, you know, edited down like this. Um, unfortunately, it's not this short when you actually do it. <laughs> That'd be nice. Well, you know, uh, he does have the Great Bridge Challenge on its own separate video with just music, no commentary. Yeah. So that's one reason why this is a little bit shorter. Yeah, the Great Bridge Challenge is pretty fun, though. That's a, that's a pretty good challenge to play. Well, really good uh, low health UF use in that challenge. Really fun. Well, I think uh, <clears throat> the time limit's a min or an hour, an hour and 40 minutes and 335 kills. He's almost here, but... Yeah, you have a ton of time for this chapter. If, if you, even if you take like a lot of time saving and stuff, you, sh you still should end with a good like 20 minutes to manage your essence. Because essence management in these last three chapters is really important. Because like no matter what you do, really, you're going to be pushed 
like really close to your essence limit. So you really want to make sure you get them as close as possible. Right, and look at his essence. So he spent it wisely and had almost uh, or almost 30 minutes left. So we'll see you in chapter 14, guys. See you guys.